Hey, welcome to the shop. This video debunks some common myths about the Honda Goldwing. For years before I bought this 2008 model in 2020, I had a notion in the back of my mind that I might someday own one. With hindsight, I can see that I had some false beliefs which kept me from buying one sooner. I hope that by dispelling those myths, this video will help other people avoid making the same mistake. Yep, as motorcycles go, gold wings are large and heavy. At first mine seemed too much so, but not anymore. Since I'm below average size, these bikes are not too big for most of you either. It helps that the GL has a low center of gravity and a reasonably low seat height. As I covered in another video, low speed maneuvering of a large motorcycle takes some skills that most of us won't master until we own one. It's kind of like learning to ride a bicycle. You're nervous at first, but with practice it becomes second nature. It's a case of brains over brawn. Because nobody is strong enough to throw 400 kgs around like a BMX bike, you have to be smarter than the machine. To see how experts handle large bikes at low speeds, Check out some of the videos on motorcycle police rodeos. These riders make it look easy because they were taught the right way to do it and they've practiced for many hours. You can learn those skills at YouTube University or from courses offered in your area. Then it just takes practice and saddle time. And if you have some experience on street bikes, you'll be able to handle a gold wing when you first get on one. The skills you've learned on other bikes will see you through as you practice and improve the new ones. So it's a fact that a Goldwing is a large, heavy bike, but it's a myth that they are too big. Looking at the price of a new Goldwing, it's not surprising that many people would find it hard to justify spending that much on a motorcycle. After all, you could buy one of probably hundreds of different new cars for less. However, keep in mind that Honda has made countless thousands of GLs in almost a half century. And I'd bet a high percentage of those are still going strong. That's because they're made to eat hundreds of thousands of kilometers with virtually bulletproof reliability, often pulling a loaded trailer and two people at 130 plus kph. But you see lots of them for sale with less than even 100,000 kilometers on the clock. From what I can tell, many are on the market because they've outlasted the seller's interest in riding, maybe due to health issues or a change in phase of life. And because owners of these bikes often have the means to properly store and maintain them, it's not unusual to find one that's had a pampered life in a comfy garage standing ready to carry its next owner as far as they want to go. So, even if a new Goldwing is out of your snack bracket, you should be able to find an affordable older model that's still a reliable daily rider while being impressively comfortable, powerful, and smooth. One reason I never considered buying a GL is that I had the notion they're only useful for long-haul touring. My typical use of motorcycles is mostly just shorter rides, maybe a couple of hours or at most a day trip. So why would I want the size and weight of a big touring bike when my son and I are just taking our bikes out for a two-hour ride? The fact is, a Goldwing is enjoyable for all types of street biking. Whether it's a long-distance highway run, a city commute, or an afternoon carving curvy coastal roads, this bike always feels at home. Virtually every review I've watched or read says a Goldwing handles better than expected. That's because it has a low center of gravity, thanks to its boxer engine, and features like an underseat fuel tank. The GL1800 also has a mighty engine. It accelerates like an exotic sports car, effortlessly getting to the speed limit, 
and it has more torque on tap than you'd need in any normal situation. Combine the surprisingly nimble handling with an engine that could easily move a car, and you get a bike that will be fun to ride down the street or across the continent. You might as well just buy a car. If you've owned a Goldwing for any amount of time, you've likely heard that old chestnut. Of course, that idea is coming from the fact that a GL keeps most of the wind and rain off its riders, while offering so many comforts that aren't usually found on other bikes. I guess in the minds of some people, the line between cars and motorcycles is somehow crossed by luxury touring bikes. So let's try to describe that dividing line. What makes a motorcycle different than a car? In my opinion, the main difference is being immersed in the elements. On a motorcycle, you get the breeze on your body, and you feel the road almost as if it's under your feet, and you hear the tires, engine, and wind singing in three-part harmony. Unlike a car, you use your entire body to steer a motorcycle. You have to be at one with the machine, changing its direction by moving your own center of gravity. Instead of merely turning a wheel and being pulled along like a piece of cargo, a motorcycle gives you the acceleration of the G-forces tugging at your every cell as you lean through a corner. They typically accelerate faster than cars, offering an added thrill when you're pulling away from the light or shooting out of a sharp corner on a country road. People pay money and stand in long lines to get those sensations from amusement park rides. Aside from flying fighter jets, motorcycling is as close to riding a broom as we muggles can get. So does the Goldwing offer me all those things that differentiate a motorcycle from a car? Well, I'm in the elements, even if protected, and if I want more wind, I can adjust my windshield. I hear the music, including an assuring, steady bass line from that 1800cc engine. I feel the road in the palms of my hands, and I waltz with the G-forces to steer through the corners. As for acceleration, this bike has more than enough pull to put a tingling in your gut and a smile on your face, from a standing start or from 100 kph. If you haven't ridden a Goldwing, I can see how you might believe they're more car than bike. But a ride on one will tell you it's a motorcycle through and through. A common stereotype about Goldwings is that they're an old guy's bike. I suppose there's some truth to that, because from what I can tell, most GL owners are older than your average motorcyclist. But I'd say this notion is partly based on a couple of the other myths I've already put to bed here. If you think a Goldwing is expensive and made only for long haul touring, you'd also think that the typical owner of a Goldwing is a retiree with time to travel and the money to do it in style. And even after we take away those myths, it's still fair to say that the average Goldwing owner is on the older side. So let's look at that. I'd bet that many people who own a GL now have owned a long list of other bikes over the years. With that experience comes wisdom. Sometimes anyway. So, is it possible that those older folks on Goldwings have learned something that younger people would like to know? We've all heard or used this old adage, I wish I knew then what I know now. Well, here's one thing I know now. My only regret about buying a Goldwing is that I didn't do it years sooner. Thanks for watching.